For a function to be considered continuous at x equals c, three conditions must be met. The first condition is that f of c must exist. This is not involving a limit, this is just plugging in c into function f. But that value must exist. The second condition is that the limit of f of x as x approaches c must also exist. And the third condition is that the limit of f of x as x approaches c must equal the actual value at c. In this next example, we're given a graph and we're asked if f of x is continuous at x equals negative 2. So what you might be tempted to do is to just look at this graph and say, well, at x equals negative 2, it looks like it's continuous. It's a straight line. There are no jumps in the graph. There are no breaks in the graph. Nothing is approaching infinity or negative infinity. And that is true. But what I want to do in this situation is actually go through the procedures of determining if the limit exists algebraically so that we can do it on an example when we're not given a graph. So first step is to determine that f of c exists. So f of negative 2, we can see on the graph, is 0. f of negative 2 equals 0. That one exists. Check it off. The second one, the limit of f of x as x approaches c, which in this case is negative 2, exists. Coming in from the left side, x is approaching 0. Coming in from the right side, x is approaching 0. So the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 equals 0. 0 is a number that exists. Check that one off. Now the limit must equal the actual value at the function. We can see that 0, which is the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2, is equal to f of negative 2. They're both 0. So I'll write out limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 equals f of negative 2, and both of those are equal to 0. Since all three of these conditions are met, we can say yes, f of x is continuous at x equals negative 2. In this bottom example, we'll look at if f of x is continuous at x is equal to 1. So first step is to determine what is f of 1. We'll look over on our graph here. f of 1 is negative 1. That one does exist. Step 1 is good. Next, we need to look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 1. From the left side, it's approaching negative 1, but from the right side, it's approaching 3. Since the left-sided and the right-sided limits don't match, this limit does not exist. So since we've hit something that does not meet our criteria, we can say that no, f of x is not continuous at x equals 1. As soon as you get something that doesn't work, you can stop the problem and say, no, it doesn't work. If we were to go on to step three, negative one is not equal to does not exist. So that criteria would also not be met. A common way that this skill is assessed on the AP exam is that it will give you a function and then it will say, discuss the continuity at a certain point. In this question, we're being asked to discuss the continuity at x equals one. And what that really means, it's asking you to say, is it continuous? and show your work and prove it. So to prove it and show our work, we're going to go through those three steps that we discussed earlier. First is to find f of one. We need to look at our domain restrictions when we're determining which function we're going to plug one into. We're going to pick the bottom one because that's when x is greater than or equal to one, and x is equal to one in this case. So I'll plug this in, one squared minus six times one plus 10, 1 minus 6 plus 10 is 5. That number exists. Step 1 is good. Step 2, we'll find the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. This is a bit complicated because it's a piecewise function. We're going to have to look at the left-sided limit. That's when x is approaching 1 from the left side or x is less than 1 and the right-sided limit. Luckily, these are both continuous functions, so I can use direct substitution. I'm going to plug in 1. And I'm actually going to do it up here because I have some more room. So for this top function, I'll plug in 1. 1 half plus 9 halves is 10 halves, or 5. Then for this bottom function, 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 10 is equal to 5. So even though this is a piecewise function and it might look like there's a jump in the graph here, a jump discontinuity, the, the numbers are both equal to 5. That means that the pieces actually do line up. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is equal to 5. Step 2 works. Now step 3. 
is the actual value at the function equal to the limit? In this case, we can say yes, they're both equal to 5. f of 1 equals the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is equal to 5. So we would say, yes, the function is continuous at x equals 1 because this justification in step 3. Yes, it's continuous because f of 1 is equal to the limit of f of x as x goes to 1 is equal to 5. And that would be our answer. Down in this bottom example, we're asked to discuss the continuity at x equals 0. First, let's find f of 0. We'll plug it into the top function because that's where our domain restriction works. 0 is less than or equal to 0. Negative 1 fourth times 0 plus 7 is equal to 7. Step 1 works. Now the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x. Here we're going to have to look at the left side and right sided limits. These are continuous functions. We will use direct substitution here. For this top function, negative 1 fourth times 0 plus 7 is equal to 7. And for this bottom function, we're going to have to use some special trig properties here. We have sine of 3x over 9x. And if I were to plug in 0 right away, I would get something over 9 times 0 or something over 0. That does not work. What I'm going to have to do is split this into sine of 3x over 3 times 3x. And I know that one of my properties is that sine of x over x is equal to 1 when I'm finding the limit at x equals 0. I should really have limit notation on the front of this. This should say limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x over 9x. So now I will split this into the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over 3 times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x over 3x. And now I can simplify the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 third is 1 third. And we know from our special trig properties, limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. So 1 third times 1 is 1 third. Unfortunately, 7 is not equal to 1 third. The left sided limit is not equal to the right sided limit. So the overall limit does not exist. Since we've gotten one step that doesn't work, we can accurately say that the function is not continuous at x equals 0 because the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 does not exist. Another way that your understanding of limits and continuity may be assessed is that it will ask you a question that says something like this. Find the value of k that will make f of x continuous at x equals 5. The way to solve a problem like this is simply to follow the steps for finding continuity, and then you'll see where you need to plug in k for something. So the first step is to plug in 5 to f of x. I'm going to need to plug it into this top function because that's where the domain restriction will make this work. 5 is less than or equal to 5. So I'll plug this in and I get 5. Second step is to find the limit as x approaches 5 of f of x. This is going to be a bit more complicated because I need to find the left-sided and right-sided limits. First, I will find the left-sided limit. And since this function is a, is a continuous function, I'm going to use direct substitution. I know that my left-sided limit needs to be 5. Now I'm going to find my right-sided limit. I'm plugging in 5 to the bottom function now. 2 times 5 minus k. That is equal to 10 minus k. So this is where I'm going to be able to set 10 minus k equal to 5 because I know that one of the criteria to make this function continuous is that the limit of f of x as x approaches 5 must exist. And for a limit to exist, the left-sided limit has to be equal to the right-sided limit. So 5 must be equal to 10 minus k. And then I can solve that and say, well, k needs to equal 5. 
Here's another similar problem. It asks us to find the value of k that will make f of x continuous at x equals negative 8. My first step is to find f of negative 8. I'll need to use the bottom function because this is the function for which the domain restriction works for negative 8. Negative 8 is equal to negative 8. So f of negative 8 is equal to k. I don't have anything to set k equal to yet, but I will in just a minute. For the second step, I need to find the limit as x approaches negative 8 of f of x. Remember, we don't care what the actual value is at negative 8, we just care what the value is approaching. And because this is the function where x is not equal to negative 8, but it's really close to negative 8, we're going to need to use this function to find the limit. It's irrational, so we need to factor. And there's a common factor in the top and the bottom. That common factor is x plus 8. That means that there is a hole at negative 8. A limit can exist at a hole, and if I want to know what the limit is at that hole, I need to find the y-coordinate of the hole. To find the y-coordinate of the hole, I plug in the x value to the function, the simplified function. This should really say there is a hole at x equals negative 8. So now I'm going to plug in x equaling negative 8 to x minus 4. And that is negative 12. So my hole is really at negative 8, negative 12. Remember that a limit can exist at a hole, and the limit is the f of x value of the hole. So my limit of f of x as x approaches negative 8 is equal to negative 12. For my third step, f of negative 8 must equal the limit as x approaches negative 8 of f of x. This means that k must equal negative 12. And I have just found the answer to my question because it was asking me to find the value of k that will make f of x continuous at x equaling negative 8.